Hey, Rainbow here and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about a comparison of the new Diavel, which is going to be getting delivered, I guess, sometime starting in March or so of 2023, and that is the Ducati Diavel V4 with the Gran Turismo engine in it. And I'm gonna compare that against the Diavel 1260S. So uh, why did I choose the S not just a regular? Well, because I wanted a little bit of a higher end so you can see what the comparison is because the Diavel V4 is gonna be more money than what you would pay today for a Diavel 1260S. So let's talk about it. All right, well, I've talked about price, so let's get into some specifications here on this bike, okay? Number one, the current 1260S is about $24,895, whereas the V4 is coming in starting at $26,695, all right? The current 1260S is 157 horsepower, and that's at 9,250, and the V4 is going to be 168 horsepower at 10,750. We're looking at about 95 pound-feet of torque on the 1260S, and that's at 7,500 RPM, and we're looking at a little slightly below in torque of about 93 uh, pound feet of torque and that's it's also at 7500 rpm so the only difference seems to be that there's about 1500 um, more on the upper rev range to get the peak horsepower with the v4 now the seat which really isn't an issue for many people with this particular bike because it's a little bit of a lower the seat is coming in at 30.7 feet yeah <laughs> 30.7 inches or 780 millimeters for the Diavel 1260S, and it's around a slightly higher at 31.1 inches or 790 millimeters on the new V4. Now, the 1260S has the 1262 cc Testra Strata engine, whereas the V4, which I'm very familiar with, has 1158 cc's, and that is the Gran Turismo. So I'll talk about this Gran Turismo a little bit before we go on to the rest of these numbers because you can look up these numbers, but I'll just present them to you hopefully in a way that they make sense. I have basically around 30,000 miles under my belt just on that V4 uh, Gran Turismo engine. And that is a cross between the um, Multistrada V4S and the Multistrada V4 Pikes Peak. Same exact engine and same exact engine going into the Diavel V4. I will tell you that I really like this engine. It's very responsive. I love the torque curve. Once you get in that upper rev range, like most motorcycles, you really feel it and you feel that torque kick in. You feel those horsepowers, horsepower? Anyway, so I do like that uh, engine and I think it's a great choice. Yes, it's less CC, but it's a little bit more bang for your buck. Let's continue. Now the 1260 has the Bosch fuel injection and it doesn't say Bosch for the V4, the new V4 Diablo, it just says that it's got electronic fuel injection. You have a stainless steel muffler on the 1260S with a catalytic converter. However, on the new Diablo V4, you have four pipes and it's a stainless steel system with two catalytic converters the way they set this thing up. All right, both have a six speed transmission and I believe that the 1260S, when you bump to the 1260S, it does come with the Ducati quick shifter, just like it does with the V4. I know that the standard 1260 does not come with the Ducati quick shifter. It is something that you have to pay for as an add-on. All right, uh, the primary drive is 184 to one on the, pri on the 1260S, where it's a 180 to one on the V4. Now, it's a chain and sprocket on both because I know one of the Diablos does, uh, you know, or did have uh, a belt drive, which I did test drive one of them too in the past. Um, and this chain and sprocket on a 1260S, the current model is, the front is 15 teeth, the rear is 43 teeth. 
Now, on the V4 coming out, they added basically one tooth to the front. It's a 16 teeth on the front and 43 on the rear. The <clears throat> current 1260S has a steel trellis tubular frame and we have the aluminum monocoque on the new V4. Now, the 1260 has 48 millimeter adjustable uh, Olin's front end suspension. That's fully adjustable where it doesn't say Olin's, but the new V4 just says that it has a 50 millimeter fully adjustable uh, forks in the front. Interestingly enough, I believe those are the same forks that they have on the 1260, not the 1260S, because the 1260S is kind of your upgrade. All right, front has a three and a half by 17 inch front wheel and that's the same on both. And they both, both motorcycles are gonna run the 120, 70, 70 inch tire on there. And they both come with Pirelli. So we'll go over the specifics on that a little later. The rear, um, it has a <clears throat> 1260S has the Olin's monoshock that is fully adjustable. And in the V4, it looks like they have a fully adjustable monoshock with this, <clears throat> with a single-sided swing arm, they're both single-sided swing arms, and it has, uh, they both motorcycles have the eight inch wheels uh, times 17 in the back, and they are both running 240, 45, 17 tires. Now, as far as the wheel travel, there is a little bit of a difference here, and I'm kind of interested on how they accomplish this on the new V4, because the front, of the 1260S has uh, 4.7 inches of travel, uh, the rear has 5.1. Now, the front is the same for the V4 at 4.7 inches, but the rear gained about a little over half an inch of travel at 5.7 inches. Brembo's on both bikes, however, we have beefier um, caliper, no, we don't have beefier, actually we do have beefier calipers and we also have uh, larger discs on the front. So the 1260S has 370s on the front, 265s on the rear, a single 265 in the rear, but double 320s in the front. And the new V4 has two 330s and a single 260 on the rear. And these are the Stylema Brembo's on the front of the V4. Okay, weight wise, believe it or not, it's gonna be a little heavier with the V4, which is a surprising to me, but maybe a lot of that has to do with those two catalytic converters and that big banging exhaust that they have. I don't know where the weight's coming from. Uh, so <clears throat> the 1260S is running at about 220 kilograms wet, which is about 487 pounds. The new V4 is 236 kilograms at 520 pounds. So it is a little bit heavier as far as that's concerned. One of the uh, big upgrades is gonna be the TFT and the entertainment infotainment system, I guess, as they call it. The 1260S has a 3.5 inch TFT, but the new V4 Diavel is going to have the five inch TFT that is full color. And it reminds me when you see, it's kind of the same setup that you see on the Multistratus now, the new V4 Multistratus. So I kind of like it, I like the setup a lot. All right, wheelbase is essentially close to being the same. Diablo 1260S has a 63 inch wheelbase, whereas it's a 62.7, it's a slightly shorter wheelbase on the V4 Diablo. The rakes are 27 degrees on the 1260S and 26 degrees, one degree less, on the Diablo V4. And the trail is 120 millimeters or 4.7 inches on the 1260S and it's 112 millimeters or 4.4 inches on the Ducati Diablo V4. Now, fuel, interesting. You gain about three more liters of tank. Uh, of a fuel tank. So it says that there's about 4.2 gallons or 17 liters on the Diablo 1260S, getting confusing here, uh, but it's 20 liters and 5.3 gallons with the new V4. And my suspicion is you're gonna need that extra because one of the things that they're not doing is they do give you a mileage for the Diablo 1260S and that one is 5.5 liters per 100 kilometers. They do not give that out 
at all on the Ducati website for the D Ducati Diavel V4. They didn't do it for any of the V4s that I'm aware of. So I think there's a reason why the, you have a little bit more uh, fuel capacity uh, on the V4 tank. Okay, let's continue. They both seat two. Um, both have cornering ABS. Both have Ducati traction control. Both have Ducati wheelie control. Um, and they both have ride and power modes. They uh, both have the Ducati, I call it launch control, but it's called Ducati Power Launch, DPL. They both have the, the launch control, essentially. Um, both have cruise control. The V4 does have multimedia that you do not have in the 1260S. Now, because they're two different engines, this is a Desmo on the 1260S. So at 18,000 miles or 30,000 kilometers, you are going to need your first valve lash inspection. That does not happen with the Gran Turismo V4 Diablo because it matches the same thing as the um, Multistrada, which is 60,000 kilometers or 36 plus thousand miles as far as that's concerned. Um, and that's about it. Now, let's talk a little bit about styling. I am loving the look of this new Diavel V4. Uh, the way it's set up, first of all, all Diavels are just beasts. And when you have that really big eight inch wide tire on the back, it just looks badass. And now you throw this uh, really nice Gran Turismo engine in it, you change the styling a little bit, and the bike just looks awesome. I can't wait to see how it handles. I don't think there's gonna be a big difference in handling, that'd be my opinion. But in power delivery and smoothness of the engine, I think it's going to probably be a little bit smoother based on my experience with this Gran Turismo engine and maybe a little more linear power. I don't know, we'll find out as we get practical use, not just charts that Ducati shows, you know, puts up on there. I do like that cannon look on the back of uh, the, the V4 Diavel because you have those four pipes coming out. Reminds me of a Gatling gun. And uh, I was a qualified door gunner in a UE for when I was in the Marines because I, uh, I was air crew on helicopters. And it reminds me of the GAU 2B where you just, zzz, you know, 4,000 rounds a minute. So I can't wait to see or hear how this bike is going to sound. So we'll. We'll see what the seating position feels like. We'll see how the mirrors are once we get a chance to actually ride one of these. Who knows when that's gonna happen. I'm gonna guess maybe sometime in March by the time I can get my hands on it because I'm not one of these big influencers here that Ducati says, hey, we want this guy you know, testing this bike. Uh, so chances will maybe be next summer before I can get on this bike and actually test ride it. But I am pretty excited about it. Now, would I trade the Pikes Peak in for this bike like my buddy Fabrizio plans on doing? Um, probably not, uh, but this would be a bike that I would love to have in addition to that. But if they had a way to put on side bags and travel and I felt it was just as comfortable and I felt uh, more visible, a little higher, then maybe I would, I don't know, we will see. But those are the differences in the bike. Those are the spec differences. Uh, tell me what you think about the difference. Is the uh, is it worth upgrading? Is it worth waiting for? Uh, I do see the, a lot of the Diablo 1260s are flying out of the dealer right now. When you go down to uh, du Ducati Forza in Pompano Beach, just north out of Fort Lauderdale, and I talked with Ian, uh, my salesman, talked with the owner, Omar, and the Diablos are just flying out the door. So... Uh, People are still buying these 1260s and they already have taken a couple of payments down, of course, for the new V4. So it's a popular bike. I think it's a great upgrade. Anyway, this is Rainbow. Hey, please like, please subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Thank you very much and have a good day. Bye-bye.